What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be ranking every Spider-Man movie. Let's get right into this. So as you guys know, I am a huge fan of Marvel and I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man. So I decided to finally go and rank every Spider-Man movie from the first one in 2002 up until the last one in 2019. There is a total of seven movies solo for Spider-Man as of right now. And there is one coming out in 2021. And that's why I want to make this video now ranking all of the previous movies prior to the next one that comes out in 2021. Up first is the first Spider-Man that came out in 2002. This one includes Norman Osborn, which turns into the Green Lantern. This is the one that for most people is their favorite Spider-Man movie, just because back at the time, it was one of the best movies that came out that year, in my opinion. The whole superhero franchise, in my opinion, was just kickstarting, and it was a really great movie. The one thing I will say with watching this movie now in the current year is that some of the things that happen in the movie are really corny and just completely out of it, but the action and the Spider-Man itself looks phenomenal. They really did a great job and they had a really good person cast as the original Spider-Man in that movie. So for this movie here, I'm going to rank it 7 out of 10. I absolutely loved this movie. Next is going to be Spider-Man 2, which came out in 2004. And all of the events in Spider-Man 2 take place two years after the first movie. In this movie, we see finally Dr. Octopus and we also see Harry Osborn blaming Spider-Man for his father's death. So you have a whole bunch of stuff happening in this movie. Of course, it seems like Harry Osborn is eventually going to become the new Green Goblin, but that does not happen in this movie. And of course, Spider-Man defeating Dr. Octopus, having him in this movie was phenomenal. So I'm going to rank this movie a 7.5 out of 10, just because I felt like having two villains or one that is coming to be a new villain in the franchise was very awesome to see and this movie did have a lot of action and all the corny aspects of the movie were no longer in it. Next is going to be the iconic Spider-Man 3 which came out in 2007. In this movie Harry is finally the new Green Goblin. There is an escaped convict that eventually turns into the Sandman. I guess he gets trapped in this chamber. I'm not really sure of what it's called. I cannot remember. But uh, Peter also learns that the convict, the person that is now Sandman, is the person who actually killed Ben in the first movie. The mysterious black alien bonds with Peter for a short little while, and then later bonds with Eddie Brock to become Venom. So this movie had three main villains. It had the new Green Goblin, it had Sandman, and it had Venom. This movie here was very iconic. Everything that happened in the movie was awesome. Having three big villains in the movie at the same time was awesome to see because we just don't see that other than in the Avengers movies anymore. So this movie here, I'm going to rank it 8.5 out of 10. The next Spider-Man doesn't happen until 2012, and that is The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, I'll be honest with you, just weeks ago, I watched The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 in preparation for this video. Prior to that, I did not watch these movies because they were not something that interests me at the time. In this movie here, Peter is in high school and is bit and gets his abilities of Spider-Man. However, the only thing I will say that I do not like about this version of Spider-Man is... He does not genetically have the web slinging abilities. He literally has to create a device to be able to strap to each of his wrists to be able to shoot webs. So it's not coming out of himself. It's coming out of the device he creates, which to me, I was not a fan of. And in this movie, his relationship is with Gwen Stacy and not MJ. In the first movie, he faces Kurt Connors, Dr. Kurt Connors, which turned into the lizard. This movie here was very cool to see a new version and a new take on the iconic Spider-Man. However, I was not a complete fan of it and I wasn't really sold on it, so I'm only going to rank it 6 out of 10. Next is The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and this is the last of The Amazing Spider-Man series. 
and we see Peter graduate from high school and he faces Electro, which was accidentally created in Oscorp. Electro takes a whole new look. It's not like the original look and it to me looks terrible with the blue and he's bald and to me it does not even feel or look like Electro. It looks like a terrible knockoff version, at least that's my opinion. We see that Harry Osborn is in fact dying. His father died of a disease. He wasn't killed and his father was not Green Goblin in this movie. But because he is dying, he becomes the Green Goblin only at the end of the movie and you only see him very shortly at the end and he looks hideous as the Green Goblin. As a result of beating both Electro and the Green Goblin, Gwen Stacy ended up dying, which was very emotional and to me it just had no point in the series to have Gwen Stacy die after defeating both the Green Goblin and Electro. To me it was just very corny and I just didn't vibe with it. It just to me was not the greatest of things that they could have done in the movie, especially to end the franchise there. And I'm only gonna rank it as 6.5 out of 10. Next is going to be the return of Spider-Man in Spider-Man Homecoming, which was in 2017. Now in Spider-Man Homecoming, it takes place after the events of Civil War and the construction worker and his crew are trying to clean up the mess. And then the government comes in, shuts them down, basically taking the job away from them. And they end up running into hard times and eventually start to do a lot of criminal activity. And he becomes, the leader of this group becomes the Vulture, which I thought was an amazing take on it. In this take of Spider-Man, Spider-Man is still in high school, except he does not have a device on his arm shooting the web slinging, which is what was in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. It's actually he's been bit and he can actually have all of the abilities and he can shoot webs right out of his skin. So I think this is the most realistic current version of Spider-Man they could have done. I absolutely loved Homecoming. I'm going to rank it 8 out of 10. And the last movie came out only in 2019 and that was Spider-Man Far From Home. In this movie here, you see at the start of the movie, it seems like Mysterio is a good guy and helps teaming with Spider-Man to take down a villain, but in reality he tricked Nick Fury and Spider-Man into him uh, into Spider-Man giving him a device from Tony Stark because this movie takes place after the death of Tony Stark in Endgame. So we get to see the first movie after Iron Man's death. So Tony Stark gave Spider-Man a huge device, something that could very be weaponized. And he ended up giving that to Mysterio, not knowing Mysterio was in fact a bad guy and a former employee of Tony Stark. Spider-Man eventually learns that Mysterio is a bad guy and has to take him down, but it's so crazy the stuff that happens once Mysterio has this device that it almost seems like he's going to be unbeatable, but Spider-Man ends up outwitting him and defeating him in the end. So this movie here was phenomenal. I absolutely loved this Spider-Man movie. And out of all the Spider-Man movies, this was by far my favorite one. I'm going to rank it a solid 9 out of 10. So I'm really excited to see what Tom Holland does moving forward as the current Spider-Man. And I know there is a new movie coming out in 2021. And I'm really excited to see not only what is going to happen in this movie, but to see what villain or villains are going to be part of this movie. Something tells me that right now it's rumored that Venom 2 is in the works and that Spider-Man may be featured in it. So maybe with the next Spider-Man movie that comes out in 2021, which is untitled as of right now, may include Venom in it, and I would be 100% on board if it did. So comment down below, what is your favorite Spider-Man movie out of all of the Spider-Man solo movies that have been made? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you guys can tell, I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man, so I absolutely loved doing this video for you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed. Please take care. Peace.